and its ability to project those deceiving forms written in the Socratic text. Ah, the shudder, old as light, ancient as Egyptian souls, an ex extension of their being, a figure of death, a servant for Anubis, black statues carved, the shirt, the clear shadow of the soul that lie high in the sun and moon, the kaibut, the black earth of soul. The shadow of the birth of painting in the Plinian story speaks of the ever present other. Of the body. When Bittardi's daughter in some Corinthian town saw fit to trace the difference, the boundary, the edge, the light darkness dialectic, she took her lover in the light and with her finger and hand circumscribed the divide between light and shade. And in that act of desire, the most dangerous of passions, to circumscribe the obscure, <coughs> creating a monolith of her lover. He was off the wall, not likely to return, and his shadow would go with him. This first painting, the mesis of absence and presence, tribute to him and immortalized. From this in substance, the negative, his semblance, sensuous described, a language born and two souls combined wherever he went. His shadow would follow, and his lights remain, defeating his death. That he was held in statue form, some say the image was a vertical nature, others that it was recumbent. The former would exercise the threat of death. The father then molded the image in clay, possibly to be placed in a temple with a cult object. The double has a soul in the form of shadow, and body in the form of the now. The now sculpted receptacle for the soul, an image, the mesis. And the famed other story of how those shadows tormented and imprisoned the thoughtless in sadistic gaze, a place of unknowing in the cave. In the west, where the sun sets, leaving the east in its shade, there appears Christ's shadow of the eternal, the shade of God on water and stone, Emmanuel, in Carmel. St. Peter casts a healing shadow on the sick, revealing an external manifestation of the soul. There the artist searches for the mimesis of salvation, connection with the universe, the magic of eternity, the philosopher's stone, and touched with the mixing of oil and water and stone. In the mix of paint, the combining of materials to create the magical in the hands of the artist, Elkin leads us to a place where there appears to be an incestuous relationship in elements of painting, where the paint refers to itself, and painting in general, particularly in modernism, giving it an interesting hermaphroditic character. Elkins enlighten the painter to the alchemist, both metaphorically and physically, tells us of the mess associated with painting and making, that it is an insane obsession. Alchemy is the best model for this play of paint. Like poetry or any other creative enterprise, painting is some type of thing that is worked out in the material, in the material primer, the essence of life the silence hovering over the waters. Before creation, I am no different from my work. The material primer was also imagined as a way station between utter chaos and perfection that held every substance but in an included form. And here, I try to repair the spider's web to move in time and feel the warmth of darkness in the cool night air. Opening air snags the film, the slightest space of the shadow does the best only that it embodies. I consider the wavy line and how it excites the surface at subatomic scale. Surely it must. The laser induces measurable periodic surface structures as ripples on the surface of semiconductors. Light induces response in the atom itself. 
atomic superparticle vibrating, bowed up in darkness to save the night. And just as she drew between light and shade, so I begin to explore the boundaries of photography and painting. It consumes me. Do I search for the stone? Are you my kind? You who I would risk it all for? Have we found the place where sights and smells become sound? Can you let me in where the blood runs hot and fresh? In the making, I take the material and transform it with tools and then use light and shade to distill material. Then through the distortion of the free lens, the light is transformed and the whole material moves apart, becomes disembodied. I hold this branch, this hair, this steel, a tool, an extension of my hand, protruding from my nerves and muscle, tissue and skin, my brain, electrical impulses, ions and neutrons, touching the mass, pushing, stretching, moulding, slipping, skimming, pulling. In this way, I become one through the tool with the mass. It is another skin. I see blossom litters of the past like shattered glass. I become one with it. From my, from the, my first moment, I couldn't walk away. It followed me, transformed me as I came close, and waited, and then another line. Then, the layer upon layer upon layer of the absence of light, thinning, the light thickening, each photo in the back of my being, exploding on the surface that surrounded me, ever present, and your shadow with you, this builds of time, the thick, black, sticky, homunculus mess. And I move again to the Lesute, daring to make art to take cross, working in quality, stealing ink and envelopes on which to draw from the post office where he works. He battles with life and sense and mental health, and yet in his drawing expresses the visceral life of the ancients, the pull of the past and the wild Bacchanian dance. His art brood, a pressing of space and the pulling of shadow to the edge of the picture plane, at once understanding some connection with the universe. These finger shadow drawings of the wild and free under his shadow halo sun. And it is with ease sometimes we step under the weight to a place where realities and unrealities take on meaning and slip to our goals, joys and sorrows. Contemplating the ultimate reality through the horror and the waiting of our minds. So, where did this go? I went there once. When everything seemed changed, hills are white, earth is blue, crimson trees interlace the green sky, their twisted limbs stretching as an incarnation of relief. The black sun absorbs all tenderness. Tides flow without gravity. And my mind finds only shadows in the dance of light. Maybe music keeps cadence to the fall of leaves, mingled with tears. And I'm led to the sublime, which as I understood was terror and music coupled with music. And this takes me to another place out of darkness, and the art still compelled. The image, text, shadow, light, box. Reality, the sh shadow of the figural makes it so. Without a shadow, only light, there is only transcendence. The shadow of the object casts on the figural, an intention to obscure the image without publicity. The shadow makes subject object. The shadow makes people. Lapis's digital economical profile studies using Holway's silhouette machine is a letter meant for examining the contours of shadow profiles to understand the human soul. It was a kind of divination, still showing that the shadow was thought to have the kaibut, a soul, even revealing the devil inside in the confessional. We move to now, the hypercube, consider the shadow, the flatness of it, existing in its own flat world of two dimensions, a projection of a third dimension. How could it conceive of this other dimension? And what if the third dimension were a projection of 
the fall. How could we in our three-dimensional world know anything of the fall, except that we are projections of this? The mathematicians have it. To simplify, if there were a cube form existing with the fourth dimension perpendicular in some way to all the dimensions of the cube, we can conceive only what it is like by its projection in three dimensions. It would look like this. Now this is a projection shown in two dimensions. Could this be the thick shadow I am searching for? And what are more complex objects? Moving, viscous, visceral. What to do? Humanity is projected in other dimensions. The thick shadow of some other form. I work in this. I work in this space, in this time, with the shadow of materiality I know of and what is to come of it. These same bones, this stuff, parted and given, an event, reality and shadow, thickness, viscosity, flickering, dimensionality. I take the material in all its subjectivity, bitumen, pitch, black. Surface oozes, flows in half light. I think about this thickness of shadows and this stuff, pitch, black, the signifier, absorbed in every waking movement and stillness, the substance of the earth, the coal oil plant, the condensation, the stuff of dreams and nightmares. Barter enlarges a viscous substance such as pitch, is an aberrant fluid. It appears to us at first to manifest a being that is everywhere slipping away and everywhere similar to itself. The viscous reveals itself as to be sensuous and shady because its fluidity exists in slow motion. There is a thickness to its liquidity. It is, in itself, it represents the nascent triumph of the solid over liquid, the stuff of nightmares. So this material I choose as material primer to make thick shadows and then sculpt and paint and mold with tools and then mediate through the free lens to a further aberration and receive diamond points of light, flicker and stretch, the moment of the photograph, free movement of the lens and light lighting. Suddenly the pitch black blazes, shadows thicken, abstract forms appear leading to some paradolian urge to see something insignificant. Sartre's nightmare comes to life. Out of darkness something else. It brought back the memories of my childhood as I went to see the major Egyptian exhibition of the British Museum. When Howard Carter opened a small hole in the tomb of Tutankhamun in 1922, Lord Carnarvon asked him what he saw. His reply was, I see things, wonderful things, gold, 